And now, to the millions and millions of listeners and viewers all across the world, Done it, it's done it. the That's Not Christian Podcast. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yo, 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 what up, y'all? It's your boy, Switch. I'm here with your man, Jimmy. I'm here with your man, Ant. I'm here with your man, Jay. And we have a very, very special guest from Rapzilla, Justin Sarachek. Yeah! What up, what up, what up, man? Puerto Rican representative. I see you got that You got that hat on today, huh? Yeah, I, you know, I... I saw you guys and I was like, all right, you know, I got to I got to join. I got to fit in. <laughs> I got to represent. And, and most of you guys are from New York anyway. So I'm good. Just yeah. Family. So <laughs> so I just found out that you're from Staten Island. Well, you you not in yeah. Staten Island. No, I mean, yeah, I'm in Staten Island. Always. OK. Oh, you were born and raised over there. Yeah, let's go. Uh, Talk is in the house once again. You already know. <laughs> taking over. <laughs> so now, so now we're so we, extra. We, well, no, we got we got the Puerto Ricans and the New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah. that's true, though. That's true, wow. man. Boricuas. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way, man. I, I feel outnumbered. Like, let me have my wallet real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the parade got canceled, so it's here. <laughs> wow <laughs> yo for real so what's been going on this week man anything interesting happened anything uh yeah y'all y'all heard was on the news or anything like that um i heard that uh yeah that we celebrated our one year anniversary for covid oh the one year anniversary right oh that well well, well you mean like the first case, right? Like, well, was it like in China or first. something like that? Yo, yeah. but they didn't never, like, we didn't know that initially. We didn't. No. Nah, we did, not. though. We did. They've been talking about it for a minute. No, for a minute. Yeah, but when, they said. Now, that's, but, go ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, they've been saying, hey, November 17 was the first case of Corona. Right. They ain't say that. No, 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 no. They said, they said, they said it was possibly December, not November. So, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. In front, you see. Well, China at first was saying that I made a mistake. Was, Can I make a mistake, man? It was I'm US. They lying. Oh, China yeah. was saying that US had brought it um in the Olympics, right? Was it yeah. something like that? Or they had their yeah. troops bring it? So, yeah. That old dude was in the military. Olympics. Yeah, they had the military Olympics. Military That's right. Olympics, yeah. yeah, I remember now. That yeah, was in yeah, November. Yeah. Yeah, that was November. Like September, October, I thought. Uh, oh, yes. probably. I'm going to fact check right now. Nah, yeah, so Y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead. November 17th is a one-year anniversary of... The first person uh, that contracted. Mm. Wow. Yeah. My wife's birthday falls on Corona anniversary. Oh, that's right. Uh, it was your wife's birthday. Shout out to yeah. Mrs. P. Yes, <laughs> happy birthday, man. Yeah. Well, so we can't say it. He can't say it. <laughs> he can't say it. He was like, oh, I'm not going to say that. Kind of way. I don't want to butcher it. I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he told Mrs. P. I'm going to try. Yeah. What, what is it? Huh? Pumarejo. Oh, Pumarejo. There you go. Oh, you there, you're right there. Oh, you got it? Pumarejo. Wow. wow. I can't even. Wow. Yo, I ain't even Boricua, and I know how right, to say it. Right, that's what I was saying. I can't even rely on, <laughs> on, the, <laughs> on the other weekend in Dominican. Your wife is Puerto Rican. What you mean? Oh, uh, but still true, 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 yeah. true. Wow, because so I'm adopted. Stop. You saying I'm adopted, <laughs> right? I mean, I guess so. <laughs> hey, yo, the, the the Military Olympics was October 18th to the 27th. That's what I oh, said. See, September, October. So, I was one of those two. so a month, a month before. Yeah, that's it, what it ain't come from them then, because this dude a whole month later. Right. That's true. That's wild. I know, right? That is so how you how you feel how you feel on, on the on the on the anniversary of the one year anniversary of COVID, man, Cali's still locked down. We still got mask mandates. You know what I'm saying? But nothing's changed. The streets don't care. Right. I mean, today they announced school. New York City schools are closing. Um, I suspect lockdowns. We kind of have a mask mandate, but, you know, it depends on who the person is. It's only like when you go into a store, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. Nobody's really yeah. enforcing it like on a regular. We don't have a mask mandate, but Cuomo is saying that there can, only be 10, there can only be 10 people 
in a gathering in someone's private residence. Get out of here. You he can't have more, like no more than 10. His house. How many Cuomo's is there, yo? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> right. That'd be funny, right? Like he, he'll probably have like twenty people in his crib. He will. Yo, yo is it is it mandatory wild. to is it mandatory to wear a mask on the train or the ferry? I, probably. I, I haven't. Know, I, I haven't d- done anything. These dudes are like, I'm rich. I got a car. <laughs> yeah, I, I live in Staten I have Island. A car. You need you need a car in Staten Island because yeah. you, you got one train that runs up and down. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And I'm not trying to catch any bus during during COVID either. Right. right. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But What's yeah, that was kind of Staten Island though. Huh? What's, What's it, it like? looking like? What's it looking like? You it's, know what I'm saying? Like it's the worst uh, per proximity here because because nobody here cares. Because uh, <laughs> Staten Island, Staten Island separates itself from from the city. The the forgotten borough. Where the I'm not trying to get political, but we're the one part of New York that voted red. Um, mm, so correct. people, so people feel uh, a certain way over here about like mask and rules. Um, Yo, that's so true pe- though, because everybody who like is well for the most part, everybody that I know that's like anti-mask, is they're all red. No, they're not from Staten Island, but they're all red. <laughs> Every it's single all Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so, dude, they be protesting. They be having no mask ma- uh, protests. Yeah, it's it's right. an interesting it's an interesting thing in Staten Island because it's it's predominantly Republican. Uh, a lot of conservative families. Everybody here is like some sort of city or state worker, whether they're a teacher, a cop, a firefighter, a nurse. You know, right. sanitation. That's like eighty five percent of of what Staten Island is, uh, right. and it's most it's mostly like Italian and Irish people here. Um, mm. So it's a totally different feel than you know when you think of the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, you know whatever. We're just a totally different animal. We got trees, we got deer here. It's it's not like wait the rest wait of wait. There's deer. We got yeah. deer. They come yeah. from Jersey. They actually yeah, take the Jersey. bridge or they swim. Yeah. <laughs> they so we swim. got deer, we got trees, we we have parks, we got wildlife. Like I have wow. a backyard. <laughs> you know, it's, wow. it's not like yo, I got a backyard like too. Rest. What you mean? You know, but some Barely. some places, some places don't. A lot of places in the city, whatnot. Yeah. So it's a totally sure. different. It's like basically New Jersey here. Right. Yeah, yeah. So so how you switch like switch when when he says a backyard, he doesn't mean like the fire escape. Oh, okay. Right. Just, just, right. just, to, just to be clear, nah, I'm good, man. I don't have those problems no more, man. Wow, <laughs> the Lord done delivered me. <laughs> but yo, what y'all feel about this Cuomo stuff, man? Like ten people, really, in your own residence? That's a little excessive. Yeah, Yo, you I see think... how he, you see how he want the neighbors to snitch. Oh, yeah. word. word. So what it. What are they gonna do? Like give a citation or like you got you a number? Get... They got like a. Uh, I don't know. He's gonna, he, Probably. He's gonna... <laughs> I mean, three one one still exists, but you know I what mean, I mean. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, the... yeah. If you if you got a Karen around, you know, you can be like, hey. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, and that's that's crazy because um, New York is very like multicultural, right? And Italians got big families, Puerto Ricans got big families, Colombians got big families. So how are you gonna enforce that? You know what I'm saying? Irish got big families, like. Especially for Thanksgiving, right? That's what I'm saying, well, man. Friends giving people gonna have friends giving Thanksgiving. I got a wedding on Saturday, but that's what? that's in New Jersey, so oh, so, oh, okay. so it's gonna be, I guess, it's on till it's canceled. Is pretty much how I'm looking at it. Wow! Man, I hope, but if it was in New York, it definitely would have been canceled for sure. I, but even I, now, I'm like, know. yo, I hope. I don't know. Like, I'm kind of not like wanted to go. That's gonna be yeah. the most people I'm in front of since march wow oh so you kind of stayed in the whole the whole time during the pandemic yeah yeah i did the whole quarantine thing you know i would wait two weeks i went and visited my grandmother you know made i got tested everything you know went and visited her after a while uh you know parents back and forth to see my kids um but that's really it like really immediate immediate family and we all know what what we're doing and Mm -hmm. what but like as far as you know, just a whole group of people, aside from like going to the supermarket or wherever else I'm going, which I'm wearing a mask. Yeah. Um, the, a wedding is a totally different ballgame, especially now, since was, I know a lot of the people there haven't been social distancing either. 
Was that because <laughs> of like health reasons or you were just taking precautions? Yeah, we were taking precautions. I got two young kids. Um, yeah. I know, I know COVID is not really hitting the kids too hard, but it's like we're two parents. So we can't be sick. We, I got it. We got to take care of our kids. So right. you know, it's just trying to keep everybody uh, healthy and, and together for sure. Yeah. Nice. I could dig it. I'm just not feeling the, the, the Cuomo, like, in somebody's residence, I think that's their choice, you know? And if somebody, let's say if they have asthma or they have, you know, underlining issues and they feel like, hey, I'm not going to be able to come out this year because, you know, that's cool. But to tell somebody what they can do in their own residence, you yeah. know, I get it. If it's a concert, if you say, oh, we're not going to have large concerts, that's cool. But but your house? Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a little excessive. And I don't know how he's going to enforce that neither because... What are you gonna do? Send it's, the it's, it's your neighbors it's probably, to But it's it's probably like ten more than ten non residents of your house. Yeah. Like I, I wouldn't imagine like he'd be like, I don't know, you got like ten people living there, you guys gotta figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pick like and everybody. choose. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. But be like, uh oh, uh, who's in there? <laughs> How old are you? 18? Yeah, it's time you moved out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's crazy to me. Especially about. now with, with Thanksgiving. And, you know, some people, they've been going through a lot uh, mentally throughout this whole thing. You know what I mean? So the holidays is something that, you know, people come together and it's a joyful time for some people. Um, it's a depressing time for some people as well. So I would imagine that people coming together for Thanksgiving, you know, they probably haven't like, you know, like you said, you're going to a wedding like you haven't seen people in a while. It's probably like a joyful moment. Like, yeah, I get to see everyone. And now this mandate is like, well, you got 10 people over 10 people. It's, you know, it's going to be an issue. But I have heard I heard that like four sheriffs already were like, nah, we're not doing that. That's unconstitutional. That's sheriffs? Not American. Yeah. Sheriffs. Because yeah. sheriffs are the ones that like kind of reinforce that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they were like, mm-hmm. we're not doing that. They already spoke out and they were like, we're not doing that. So, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I'll be tight. Someone come tell me, yo, your people got to leave. <laughs> be like, yo, I, I'm trying to eat my pateles, man. What's going on? <laughs> I just right. go get my pateles. <laughs> you open the door with the go get those pateles. Like, man, what you want? <laughs> yeah, no, nobody's going to be getting that though because. Those are like Christmas traditions. Everyone's coming over. No one's getting yeah. those. This right, year. right. <laughs> that's see, that's corny. Unless you're the one making them. Yeah. <laughs> then, then you got then all you got the monop- You got a monopoly in your kitchen. So, and <laughs> you don't have those problems in GA, right? Are we good out here? You can do whatever you want. You can go wherever you want. My son got invited to a, a, a what, like Let's a birthday it. party oh. Saturday. And it was at like a you know one of them indoor trampoline spots. Mm. So you know, how you feeling about that? You going? Huh? You going? Now he went Wait. already. He went. Oh, they went. Oh, yeah. yeah so it how, wasn't, you, how you felt about that? I mean, it was straight. It wasn't a lot of people in there when I went. It was just. It seemed like it was just the party. It's almost as if they rented out the whole place. But um, you know, he he straight. He been good. Yeah, I took my son a while back to one of those trampoline, like in the summer, and it was dead. It was like maybe three other kids. Yeah. That was when nobody was going out. No one was even going to the beach during the summer. It was like empty in, in, in some beaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Georgia's different, man. You go out there, it look like um it look like a regular day. It looked like February of this year <laughs> before COVID hit. <laughs> yeah, it's wild to see an empty New York City. Like I had to take my son to a doctor's appointment in Manhattan. And from Staten Island to Manhattan, that trip could take like two hours. And then I wouldn't even be able to find parking. We right. did that thing in 35 minutes and I found the spot right in front of the doctor. <laughs> and I was like, what? There was nobody. This I think this was back in like April. There was just Imagine. nobody on yeah. the road. I was like, this is like the walking dead right now. That's yeah. crazy. Did you take pictures, like video? Like, yo, look at this. Yeah, the no, like I was moment. just trying to, I was trying to like ingrain it. I was just <laughs> like, yo, let me let me remember this because I'll I'll never I'll never see this again. This is wild. <laughs> I know. Thirty five yeah, minute crazy. trip to Manhattan. A little like right. I am legend out there. Yeah, mm-hmm. it usually takes me thirty five minutes just to get over the bridge. 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was crazy. I mean, I, I mean, we, I spoke about this on the earlier episodes, but I, was, I stayed around Times Square, and the amount of people that were there was very little, but then also a lot for what's been going on with COVID, you know? So, yeah, but yeah, man. Instead I, of like 5,000 people per block, it was like 500, but that was still way too many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one thing I definitely miss is no traffic, no nothing. I mean, now you get some traffic, but uh, it's, it's crazy. So did, what you guys, did you guys hear about the FDA recently approved um, home tests, Corona home tests? I, I saw that. I saw that. But what's the difference between that one and the one that Costco sells? Like that wasn't FDA approved? Costco got one? Yeah. Costco, they sell a, a kit. Uh, oh, they do? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. How much is that joint? Like fifty bucks, probably, right? I think I think it was like one fifty. One fifty for a test. Yeah, I want to say yeah, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, but that's what I'm saying. I I don't know, bro. <laughs> I, I don't want to find out either. The city gives it to you for free anyway. You go to a rapid test, right? That's what I'm saying. You pay one fifty. That joint say positive. <laughs> then you take it again, and it says negative. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a, that's what <laughs> Elon was talking about. Yeah, that's what Elon was talking about. Elon Musk. He, he did. Was like, yeah, he was like, yes, I took three tests. I mean, what, like six tests, th- you know, three positive, three negatives. Like, what's going on here, you know? And then, and then he, he said asked, people too, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's it's something I'll put these, these they, tests. They make Dollar Tree pregnancy tests, so those will probably be next. Dollar Tree COVID tests. <laughs> wow. If they're like, be right they're next like to 50, each other. If they're like 50-50 anyway, it can't be any worse than the You than see the, the line test. for COVID? Oh, right. you got COVID. <laughs> got the mess crazy. around, get the pregnancy test and stick that in your nose. They have the, uh, <laughs> they're going to start, well, they started with the whole vaccine stuff, right? Like in December, they're going to start. Uh, yeah, you said you was first, right? Yeah. Come on, man. Cut that. Yeah, you did. He was like, I can't wait to get this vaccine. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> the slander. Well, we're not we're not gonna be getting it in New York, apparently. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't that what isn't that what Trump said? That's what he said, yeah. He um, said yeah, that because Cuomo was and, like, nah. Him and Cuomo are beefing. Yeah, yeah, because he was saying not until New York requests it. Um, so I guess because Cuomo's whole thing is I don't trust it. I, I don't know how trustworthy the FDA is, and I don't know how trustworthy these Corona um, vaccines are. I mean, and he's got a point because mm-hmm. usually vaccines take years to develop. Um, right. But I know it's a little different because this is uh, a COVID virus, right? Which we've, even though it's not COVID 19, but we had what it was, it SARS, was it? And yeah. MERS. So we've kind of had similar things. But some people don't trust it. They're like, uh, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not gonna get uh, that vaccine. <laughs> I mean, I mad at seven it. months. That's one thing from out of Cuomo's mouth that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, yeah, I just checked on Costco's website. They have uh, two versions, I guess. One for travel and one like a normal one. It's both saliva, and one is one thirty nine, and the other is one twenty nine. So one thirty and one forty. So, so that's different interesting. Brands. Uh, let me see what brand it is. Because why they turn So that's interesting. We got to look into that and see why. So one it comes with video. They want to make sure you spitting in there. I, I, I don't know. We got a nurse watching. Yeah, you. we got to look into that because oh, it says FDA approval. Yeah, it's from Azova. Oh, okay. Azova, never heard of it. Hey, yo, guys. Um, sorry to cut in. It says I'm the host now. Oh, oh, Jimmy did. And, and I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think that happens. And then I, uh, I figured anyway. you'd want to. I figured you'd want to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I saw the message. The, but, uh, uh, we should be all right. You're the newest member of TNC now. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Justin. Man, the, the easiest Listen, job Chad. I ever got. <laughs> Chad, we recruited Justin, man. He's you he's get invited on, and it's like, well, you can't leave. You're in the middle of it, so you're in. It, man. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Justin, you're, you're in, yo. <laughs> Justin can't be like, hey guys, I gotta cut it short. Uh, <laughs> I got enough to do. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but that's what's up. Also, um, did you guys hear that? Um, 
what do you call it? Uh, Trump is pulling the troops from um, Afghanistan, Afghanistan and uh, Iraq. I mean, that's cool. It's not all the troops. I think it's only like what? Hmm. Yeah, like five hundred probably. Twenty five hundred, three thousand troops. I mean, cool. they, they'll be happy. Yeah, I guess that's okay. I mean, he's been I mean, saying he was gonna do that, right? Yeah, he's been. I mean, he that. wanted what? Pull everybody out? No, bring all the troops home, but. That, yeah, but yeah. here's the thing. You're, you Dang, we man. haven't heard anything about anything that's going on there because everyone's been so distracted. I'm so sure. I bet you pull them out now and then all of a sudden you you know, there'll be back. some new headline. Oh, you know what's going on out in Afghanistan or, you know, Iraq or wherever. <laughs> oh, and yeah. it's like, but where, where, where's all this news been in the last four years or three mm. years or whatever it's been? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Yeah, that's that's a good good observation. So many Some things disappear saying, in the next for the next news cycle. Every, everything that that like remember we had Ebola, we had all these other life threatening diseases, and then something else happened in the news, and it was like, oh yeah, remember Ebola? Yeah. Remember the Zika oh, yeah, virus? Yeah. Remember all, all these? Wow, other things? Zika! Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that was, how the media is, you know. Oh, deadly virus by you, deadly. Um, they finally got it right though. <laughs> with, with this, with yes, this <laughs> deadly mosquitoes by you when there's like one death and there's one mosquito or, or something it's like all right like you guys are overhyping this but That's yeah that was interesting um some people have mixed feelings about that because uh obviously i think i think it's general uh, yeah trump's general was like nah we shouldn't have to, we shouldn't do that we should be sending more Jeez, yeah dude. Yeah, and I guess because they think like other countries are gonna, I guess, infiltrate or get in there and then do what they gotta do in there, or yeah, the people that were, the people that are being suppressed, or you know, being looked after are gonna get stronger now, you know, because we we left. Yeah. So. Yeah, because we're like kind of policing that area, and then we leave. It's like all right, rebels are back. They're taking over. They're doing their thing. But some people are like, "Yo, bring, we should have been brought them back." Like, there's no, right, like, there's no, man. there's no reason for us to be out there. We ain't NATO. <laughs> Sitting there policing everybody. We not, but we are. <laughs> right. 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 We get involved in in everybody else's problems when we have like crisis is going on here, like major right. things here. Yeah. But we just have to have our presence known because America. You know, we have to to be there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's true. Yep. Um, Yeah. Did you also see how uh, military was tracking, uh, you know, people's people's phones and their apps and stuff, the location, you know? Yeah, I've seen. and And then you wonder, you know, Trump is like, oh, don't use TikTok. Don't use like all these Chinese apps because they're tracking you. But then it's like, okay, the government could track you, the, our, your own citizens. That's cool. Wasn't one of the apps like a Muslim app? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. Muslim exactly. app and they were, that was they the were one that buy, they were tracking. They were tracking yeah. and buying their information or getting their information. I don't know if they were buying, but they were getting information from them. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we knew that. We've been known that. Yeah. That's what's funny is like everything that would be, would be, oh, that's a conspiracy theory about the laptops and you know how how we get tracked and all that like we've been known about that it's just now it's just starting to become popular it's starting to come out and everyone and even then people was like yeah i got nothing to hide yeah, yeah. i'm right. kind of i'm kind of like that person yeah I, until you can't have 10 people in your house with things that's a call was like what you doing i get a all notification right. on my phone <laughs> i see more than 10 people <laughs> <laughs> right when they start when they start hearing 11 voices through your phone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right. Or well, someone yeah. knocking on the door. <laughs> right. We know you got more than 10 people in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Play around. Hey, now that, that. You're right. You're right about that. You know what I mean? It's it's all good until it ain't good no more. Yeah. They just slowly just... Slowly adding on here and there. You're slowly entering your privacy, right? Yep. Actually, man, was it Eric Snowden? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was part of the reason why we found out about all that stuff. You know, my wife, my wife has the Target app 
and she does like pickup instead of going to like inside the store. We go inside the store too, but um, just to make it quicker and easier, we'll we'll do the pickup. And as soon as our like we'll say, oh, we're on our way. As soon as we like hit the parking lot, we get the notification knows. that they know that we're in the parking lot. Bro. Right. Yeah, What's yeah. What's crazy we, is we I have the pick. app. I have the app, right? And I won't even have it open. I'll walk in the store and it tells me it opens the Target app already. Wow. Your phone opens the app already? It gave that's me a crazy. notification. Yo, the that's notification wild. pops up telling me the store I'm at and then like it's about to open it. Oh wow. See, I got all that stuff turned off. I don't want them knowing when I'm in the store. Tracking me every aisle and all they that know. stuff. They know. They know. No, they don't. No. No. They heard you. Dang. Just like when you talk Jimmy. about Tesla. Jimmy. Get Jimmy. Just like when it when you talk about Tesla and all of a sudden it's on your IG feed. Mm. I mean <laughs> that's okay. I'm okay it. with that one. <laughs> He's all right with that. Uh, one. Now it's gonna be on all of our IG feeds. All yeah. right, just because, just because one of you is talking about it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's, That's good. Guess. Tesla, yeah. Tesla, Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. Speak <laughs> Tesla stock. But yeah, so the the troops coming back. You said they they tracking us. Well, whatever, whatever. We ain't, we already knew. They've been talking about it since enemy of the state. That's everyday stuff, man. Will Smith yeah. predicted this. <laughs> well, yeah, I seem to be chill about it, though. What? About we this? We knew this was coming. We been knew this was happening. What are you going to do? What are you going to do about it? Ring. Nada. Comcast. I mean, yeah, it's like, okay, you're going to stop using your phone? No, obviously not. So what are you going to do? How do you prevent it? You get a flip phone. <laughs> get the next tail. <laughs> how you, how you double tap on a flip phone, though? We gonna do the chirps. We going back. You to don't. The chirps. You don't get burners. You, you get gotta get you burner get phones. The what? Burner. Get a couple, get a couple burner phones. Oh yeah. Got those two. I, I guess. I'll get them satellite phones. Yeah, man. They're expensive, aren't they? You could get uh, on Amazon for like three hundred bucks. I right. checked. Oh, is that yeah. all? That's if you're right. Yeah, it's I expensive. checked. But but it's I don't know a- how much the, the plans are. Yeah, you heard mm. this guy? That's how you know right. you got money when you say, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not that expensive. It's 300 Dude. bucks you see for a satellite uh, phone. Hello, you're gonna see Jay and Target <laughs> with the phone pulling out the <laughs> antenna, <laughs> making calls, ordering a pizza with a satellite phone. Yeah, oh, man. that Zach Morris phone, you just <laughs> right, that, <laughs> right, that, man, that, thing. Yeah. that joint antenna. got no GPS, no nothing, <laughs> right? Yeah, this dude got That's money, man. Three hundred dollars. Wow. Right. Oh, $300. That's not a lot. It's, it's, it's cheaper than the iPhone, bro. Everything after twenty dollars is a lot. All right, man. Says the one that has a seven hundred dollar phone right now. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Talk man. to me. I have you got old, a piggy bank. Yo, you iPhone. got a piggy bank behind you though, so that's where all the money is. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move my screen this way. <laughs> you figured you oh, it out. your man really got a piggy bank in the back. <laughs> Yo, leave, leave my daughter's piggy bank alone, all right? Uh, Mine's in. What's that? My, her college. Her, hers is in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that, that that's her slush fund. She could do whatever she want with it. Her her what? Fund? Her slush fund. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we don't got those. <laughs> we don't got those. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are too much. I'm thinking about, I got to get one for my son. Uh, college fund or whatever. One of those. Oh, the ones. 528 thing? Yeah. I think it's 520, something like that. 529? Yeah, it's not that much, too. It's like, well, what, you know, I mean, we, we, we've talked about this. I don't know what college is going to look like. You know, oh. when our kids might have college, free so. college, maybe. I mean, yeah. define free. Uh, well, okay, here we go. Here goes uh, Mr. Taxation. Less, is yeah, there less, is, less is. money. <laughs> it's coming out. You mean we're gonna be paying for our own? We're gonna be paying more money for free college. All right. All right. <laughs> Listen, um, we already got trillions and trillions in debt, so. Uh, might as well just. We're about to be right. more with it with this uh new, new stimulus package if they push it through. Are they know? gonna pass it? I need what some you new think? Jordans. I need some new Jordans, man. <laughs> oh my God. I need a, I need more Tesla stock. Is what I need. So <laughs> go ahead and send me that joint. 
<laughs> Yo, Jay, you I'm just, just kidding, talking guys. about I'm not um, gonna spend my stimulus money on Jordans, all right? <laughs> for anybody working yeah. for anybody working in the government office. <laughs> <laughs> right. You don't want it reduced. Like that other dude, remember he took his uh his loan? His payment yeah. protection. Oh, the football, football player, right? Jury, for for, yeah. for the Jets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot his name. Yeah. yeah. Well, the other yeah. dude, you see, did you guys, uh, yo, Justin, did you see that dude, the rapper who rapped about uh, uh, doing scamming the unemployment? No. Yeah, the dude did a rap video and everything, did a whole song oh, about that. scamming unemployment. Did we talk we about a this? video for it? No. Yeah, no, we, we didn't. About it. Did we, we didn't talk we about did? it? No, we I don't didn't. Think we I feel like we talked about it. Yeah. Well, maybe in the chat, but nah, you know, for the for the listeners and the viewers. Was it a good no. song? <laughs> was it at least good? That's all I want to know. Was it? it, was was it nice? I mean, it went viral because of the story. You know what I'm saying? Is he, he got locked bars? up after. Yeah, I think he's being investigated or something like that. Let me let me fact check bars. myself. Yeah, he got yeah, bars. Actual bars. bars. Literally, I mean, he got the real you, bars. Yeah, bars. <laughs> Wait, so how do you scam unemployment? I, I think he had multiple you, cards. Yeah, I think he had multiple mm, accounts. Oh, aliases. Mm. Right. I gotta look yeah. into that. Uh, <laughs> that. I had two socials. <laughs> yeah. Right. Hey, what were you saying before? You you mentioned my name. And this. Oh no, nah, because you was talking about Amazon getting the um, getting the phone, the satellite phone. Oh yeah, yeah. So you might as well get your prescription drugs from there too, right? Ooh, very good, very good. Yeah, I mean that's pretty wild, huh? I don't know. This dude Bezos, man, he wants to get into everything. Yo, your man's name was Nuke Bizzle. Nuke Bizzle. Oh, Bizzle. Wow. We could clickbait Bizzle. this. Bizzle. You know, something <laughs> unemployment. Nuke Bizzle. Run it on Rapzilla. Yo, Yo son, your man made <laughs> 1.2 million. What? What? For <laughs> unemployment? unemployment? Yes. <laughs> How many cards he had? <laughs> Which state was this? Know. Cali. Oh, okay. Yo, Yo, what's the max? Unemployment's like 420 a month on the max. So how many? Or, no, uh, or it's a week, week. A week, a week, a week, a week, a week. A week. But even still, like how many cards you need? Oh, wow. <laughs> million. But was Let's this do the math? Let's do was the this math. during COVID or this is prior to COVID? I don't. I I, I didn't get the you chance know how to read they, the they were doing the federal, the extra. Oh, right. yeah, they were federal. The federal too. But still, all right. So how much was that? How much was that? The federal. Yo, that was like that was three hundred. All together was like nine thousand nine hundred a week, nine and change. Well, in New York, maybe he had like ten cards, and then the six hundred. So let's just say it's a thousand, bro. Let's just say he made fifty two fifty two thousand, bro. Like how many cards do you need? Wow, that's a lot of cards. It's a lot. Nineteen. I hope, the, I hope the nineteen clicks, cards. Hope the oh, clicks 20 cards. worth it. Nah, I don't <laughs> not, not if he's fa- facing uh, federal the time. <laughs> the, the viral clicks. Wonder how much money he made off of it going viral. He gonna get rise. He's gonna get a year for every card. Oh, he probably making that money back on on YouTube streams, right? He made Spotify a million. Streams. <laughs> he made a million yeah. and went viral. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He'll probably get like a, a show or something when he comes out. Right. True. He'll be watching True. himself behind bars, though. That's wild. He'll probably, you know what? He's probably gonna he's probably gonna record an album behind bars. Like uh, didn't did, uh, somebody did that? Who did that? C murdered. She murdered did? Yeah, Somebody else did that. Yeah, somebody else did that too. Over the phone? Yeah, over the phone. I, I think Wayne did too. I think Wayne, did, paid... Wayne did a couple verses. He I did think, some verses, yeah. I think he did one with Murder Inc. or something like that. I think Shine did that too one time. Mm. Wow. Over the phone. Man, can you imagine if, if, if this dude like does a whole album and blows up after it has a reality show and everything else? That's wild. That's pretty Anyway, smart. back to your conversation, Amazon. <laughs> Pharmaceuticals yeah. and all that good stuff. J. Viagra. Yeah, well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Listen, I'm yo, the you youngest. Foul, son. I'm, yo, I'm the youngest one out of all of us. Maybe well, I don't that's know what true. Justin's age. So you better watch your mouth, man. That's true. That's true. My watch bad. your mouth, love. And, and he just had two babies, so that's true. Mm-hmm. He's working. He ain't got no I, problems there. Yeah. My bad. Seriously. Switch. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 but nah, but so they, they taking over they, they they really trying to Yeah, I mean, he even said that it might be cheaper than insurance You know, Yo. now I don't know if that's like private insurance or like, you know, city insurance Well, they're saying if you don't have insurance, they're going to make it cheaper cheaper for, for the, crazy. those individuals, right? 
That's crazy. Amazon taking over everything. They already yeah. own everything. Yeah, yeah. cornering the market. For yeah, real. That's, that's nuts, man. That that's dude, nuts. He getting his hand into everything. I heard they own Rapzilla now, too. Yo, they can have it. <laughs> <laughs> they selling it, right? I love that budget. You give, you give us that Amazon budget, you'll never, see, you'll never see me again. <laughs> we'll hire mad Yo, people. Yo, haven't adjusted. Where is he at? I'll right. just be sitting at home telling people what to do. <laughs> they forever be quarantined. Right. Never leave the house. Just be hanging out somewhere nice, and we'll just be paying people to do work with that Amazon budget. For real. So, wow. budget. so with that, how 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 did you get started, like in, in Rapzilla? Well, how did you get started in media in general before Rapzilla? Yeah. Uh, so in journalism, before. yeah. So I, uh, you know, I went I went to college of Staten Island. I didn't go to a a uh, uh, like a fancy college. I stayed home in my community, and I got my journalism degree. And I was super fortunate enough that I only spent one summer. Um, teaching summer camp and delivering pizzas before I actually got an adult job. <laughs> so, so it was dope. So, someone from my church worked for, um, you guys ever heard of the Christian Post? Yes. Mm. I've been trying to reach him. Really? I'm trying to reach it. Yo, Christian Post, hit me up. I emailed you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. The Christian, Christian Post, they, they like... Try to get the, the features. Well, you got to connect right now, man. At least... No, nah, no, nah, that would mean no more. Not to finish the story. Um, but not they, to finish the story. Oh, man. They were, they're not going to email me back. Yeah, I don't know if they still are, but at the time, it's the biggest Christian publication in the world. They were getting like 12 wow. to 14 million uh, like viewers, page views a month. Mm. Were those um, schools that were giving out the newspapers to all the churches? No, no, no. Online. Oh. Online. Oh, it's all online. Yeah. Yeah. So one of my friends from my church, actually, he wasn't even my friend yet. He just went to my church. He's like, hey, you do journalism? He's like, I got a job at the Christian Post in Manhattan. Um, they're hiring. And I went and I got yeah. I got the job. I didn't think I did, but I did. Um, and I wound up uh, doing that for about two years. And then they advanced me over to another website. Once I figured out you were writing. To, yeah, I was, I was writing reporting. Then they moved me to this website where it was like beta testing videos. They yeah. basically created their own Christian version of YouTube, which oh, wow. is I'm, it's whack. Uh, but <laughs> they had me uploading, <laughs> they had me uploading Christian videos off of YouTube onto their YouTube platform. Oh, so you were ripping the videos and then re-uploading. That's all. They they had me doing that for like a year and a half. And I was like, wow. yo, does the I'm site like, still exist? Uh yeah, but I don't know what they do with this. It. it was called a oh, good yeah. news good news line. But uh never heard of it. That was yeah. Not neither have I since I left there. And uh <laughs> but I was, you know, I was studied to be a journalist and they just have me like uploading videos to a website for like a year and a half. And I'm like, yo, this is driving me crazy. I started I started doing interviews and stuff on the side. Uh I actually ran a magazine, like an actual print magazine uh, called Broken Records Magazine that was started on Staten Island. And it covered all genres of music, you know, rock, pop, very little hip hop. But I was running that whole thing with this other guy. And basically uh, how he got the magazine, how he would get coverage to like major festivals, like, you know, your warp tours, like he would get into the garden and he would wow. show up with a laminate that said Broken Records Magazine. And they'd be like, yeah, I'm here to do you know, uh, photography for, you know, whoever, like Carrie Underwood or like people like that. And like, oh, your name's not on a list. And you pull out the magazine. Oh, you never heard of Broken Records magazine? <laughs> you would like flip through the magazine and show them all his pictures. And they're like, oh, it must be a mistake or whatever. What a Go ahead, nice. go in. And they would let him in. And he was just, he was like, I'm just a dude. So he started getting into all these places and doing photography for like major artists, uh, like Kelly Clarkson, uh, oh, like wow. big, big rock bands and everything. But he was just a photographer who started this magazine. So he brought me in. I was like, I must have been like 20 or 21. So that's really how I started journalism. I, I had been a musician. I'd always been in bands uh, playing drums or doing vocals, rapping, doing whatever. Um, so I was like, yeah, music journalism, that's, you know, it's right up my alley, writing and, and doing all that. So I kept doing that magazine on the side when I was uploading all these videos, like a, like a mindless, you know, like, <laughs> like monkey. Um, and uh, I started getting like really cool interviews and I wound up getting like a really dope, huge interview 
for the Christian Post. I was like, I know I'm not a reporter here right now, but I can that- get you. Uh, you know who Scott Stapp is, the singer of the band Creed? Hmm? Yeah. The band Creed, the lead yeah, singer yeah, yeah. of the band. I know he's he is. a big artist. I, right. And he was coming to Staten Island. And I was like, I can get him into the Christian Post. He's a Christian, or he was, I don't know. He just wrote, a, he had just written a book. So I got him to come there. Uh, and I did this interview with him on camera and everything. And again, wow. I'm, I'm just a dude who was like, they had me writing Uploading trending videos. stories. Like prior to that, I was writing about like Justin Bieber and Jeremy Lin, like Christian um, entertainers. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they moved me to that video thing. And then I got this website and then I started writing. Then they brought me back to writing and they're like, yeah, you don't get a lot of hits. So we're going to, you know, if you don't get like 30,000 hits a, um, a week, we're going to have to let you go. Oh, so wow. I had to figure out how to get clicks. And that same friend who got me the job threw me a lifeline. And he was like, yo, uh, I write about video games sometimes, and those get a ton of hits. And at the time, uh, Xbox One and PS4 were coming out. And there was like a new Pokemon game and a new Smash Brothers, all that stuff. So I started writing about that, and my hits were piling up. And I was getting like over a million uh, views a month on my articles. Wow. wow. And then they, so then they were just like, yo, like, you know what you're doing. Now we're just going to give you this website. Uh, it's called breathecast.com. We just bought it. We want it to be like our MTV, like our Christian music hub of the Christian post. We're going to make you the assistant editor and you're going to run that whole shit. So that was like my dream job. I got that job as assistant editor of breathecast. I had everybody, everybody come in uh, to the New York office. You know, we had the look Cray in there, uh, KB. We had like wow. your Carrie Jobs, uh, TD Jakes. Like all wow. of these, these huge people within Christian media, um, you know, all, all genres. Um, and you were interviewing them. I was interviewing them either on the phone. We had another um, girl. You, you guys remember um, the singer Jeannie Ortega? She had a song, yeah. Crowded, yeah. Crowded with Pat Poos. Yeah. So mm-hmm. she's a Christian. She got a job at the Christian Post too. And her and I were co, were co um, editors of this website. We ran the ship. But wow. she was more of the on-air face, and I was I did more of the phone yeah, stuff, the a lot of the writing yeah. and uh, you know the production behind the scenes. So we did all that stuff, and I did that, you know, did the Dove Awards, did all that for like a year and a half, and then and then they we came in one day, and the the writing was kind of on the wall. They were like, "Yeah, we're going to shut down the the New York office," and you know, all like fifty or forty something people that were there, they they laid everybody off. Oh. Wow. Um, they had another office in DC and they just relocated, you know, everything to DC and everyone in New York, um, except for like three or four people were let go. Um, so I was one of, I thought I was going to be the one that they didn't let go. Cause I was like, man, I, I've killed it here. Everything that I've done. And right. you know, I was, I was always in meetings with the upper management. So like, I thought I was upper management. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm good. I'm good. And they're like, yeah, you, you're out too. And I was like, dang. Wow. Um, so, you know, I, so it was just like, okay, well now what do I do? It's the only, you know, I was fortunate, like right out of college, that was, I got a journalism job and this market is tough. And it was a journalism job in a field I knew, uh, you know, Christian music. So I was like, I couldn't have gotten in, in like a more perfect, you know, spot than that. Right. right. So now like, this is the first time I was going to be like unemployed where it's like, you know, like a job outside of college, not like, well, I guess I could just go back to delivering, you know, pizzas or doing what I was doing. Like, I was like, I needed to do more than that. You know, I was married. I, I you know, we had, a, we have a house, you know, we have, yeah. I didn't have kids yet, but it was just like, yeah, I need to, I need to find a job. You should have met with that other dude that uh, got a million dollars from unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> <New business. laughs> right. Yeah. I'd be right next to him. I'd be right next to him right now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that's when I I had previously met uh, Chad from Rapzilla. I you know I wasn't friends with him or anything, but I had met him. He had come to the office actually. Um, with you guys know who Tim Trudeau is or Trudeau from Syntax mm. Syntax Records. Oh Sounds yeah familiar. yeah 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 from Syntax yeah from Syntax. So him and Chad worked together at Syntax for years, and Chad was doing Rapzilla too. So they had come, and I had met both oh, wow. of them. Um, and when I got, when I was unemployed, I was like, well, let's try this freelancing thing. 
So I hit up Rabzilla and it was Chad and, and Phil Rude was still there at the time. And I was like, yo, do you guys, you know, have paid freelancers? And they were like, nah. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then, <laughs> that was it. Like that was the whole email. I was like, nah. But then they, they sent, they sent a follow-up and they're like, well, we know who you are. <laughs> so like shoot us an offer. So I really lowballed myself. Like it was like, yeah, yeah I, I work for like $10 an article or something like that. So I was like, I just want to get my foot in the door on something. And I was like, right. they can't say no to $10 an article. And they did it. And then I suckered myself out for, for the first little while. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. And then Tim actually hooked me up with some freelancing gigs at CCM Magazine. Okay. Um, so I found hey, a couple emailed you guys too. <laughs> yeah well they they uh well they eventually let me go too um but don't, don't go where i've been is that that's the lesson i guess um yeah like they restructured and everything uh i yeah, almost yeah. had a job with them and then they were like we want the two but nobody has a job now and i was like okay um <laughs> so i did well with rabzilla and then eventually i was like yo do you guys like need someone to be on the team like i literally have nothing going on i need money I will be here every day. And by here, my house, you know, I can, I can just show up, I wake up and I'm ready to go. Um, so that's how I got involved with Rabzilla. And it was uh -huh. like, I did like 20 hours a week for about six months. And then it was 30 hours and then it was 35. And then eventually it was like, Hey man, like you're doing everything. You're, you're the editor, you're in charge of this thing. And I was like, yeah, I am like everywhere <laughs> <laughs> I've gone. You know, from Broken Records Magazine to uh, to Christian Post, like I worked my way up to be the guy. That's really dope. That says so, a lot about your work ethic. Yeah, man, thank you. Thank you. Like my, yeah. my thing is like, you know, I, I am I am a slow starter, like admittedly. But I was like, yo, but once once I get it, yo, everybody watch out because mm. you know, I get obsessive. Like I was like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm pounding out articles. I'm interviewing people. I got to I have to strive for that excellence. So, and what else is encouraging yeah. is like you didn't give up with the you know after being let go of twice right in in in, in journalism you didn't just like say ah, i'm gonna Ooh. just stop doing this maybe this isn't for me you just kept going you know yeah i mean it's wild because say i graduated with maybe like 60 to 70 people that were you know took journalism with me it's like me and maybe one or two others that are still actually doing journalism Wow! and, and that have actually, and out of like those 60 or 70, maybe 10 actually even made it to get a journalism job. Mm. So I'm, you know, you, you keep tabs on people, especially when you're that small of a group, you know, your friends on, you know, LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. And she's like, yo, none of these people are writing or Half of them aren't even in communications like of any kind, like marketing, social media, nothing. And wow. it's tough out there because technically anybody can do what I'm doing. Whether you do it as, as well as me is a different story, but like anybody can do it. Anybody can break news at any point. You, right. you pull out your phone like this 10-year-old this kid. There could be a fire in a neighborhood. Kid pulls it out. He goes live on Instagram. He just broke the story of there's a fire in your neighborhood. That kid gets, right. you know, a hundred thousand views and they're like, oh, who's the journalist who broke that story? Oh, little Timmy, <laughs> the neighbor. Yeah, so like and anybody could do this. Anyone can have a blog and anybody can record videos from their house, have, have a podcast, you know, do, do whatever. Um, so it's super competitive. Right. Um, so it's just like, how do you make, just like rappers, technically anyone can rap, anyone can make beats in their house now, anyone can record themselves. So it's trying to like rise above you know, what, what makes you stand out from everyone right. else. So that's what I've always, that's like the work ethic I've tried to have. Like, I know you can do this, but can you do it as well as me? Um, right. So let me, so in that way, I'm kind of like a rapper, like a rapper wants to eat everybody on the beat. I want to destroy everybody. <laughs> me, like I want to, I want to kill everyone with an amazing story. Mm. You know, I want to write the, if I'm interviewing you, I want you to feel like this is the best story that's ever been written about you in your entire life. Um, right. And that's, that's kind of how I approach everything. Mm. Now, how long have you been on Rapzilla for? Uh, so I got laid off October, 2015. So it's actually, and, and started writing with Rapzilla. I think my first article was like late November around Thanksgiving. So it's been about five years. Wow. wow. Congratulations. Years. Happy anniversary. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, and it's it's crazy because, like you're saying, like there are about 60, 70 people that you might have graduated with or mm-hmm. received that journalism degree. But they all can do it because they're all in a bigger space, right? Like it's even more competitive for you because we're now you're talking in the Christian world where that gets a little bit smaller as opposed Ain't too many jobs, to, well, right? Right. Well, yeah, it's yes and no. It's not competitive in the sense that I'm concerned that other people are going to come like, no, like no, I'm competing no. against other people because there's not that many right. that are like specifically, you know, can do like that. But, but at the same space. time, it, it's smallness, right? So like, like, oh, Rapzilla is like the complex of Christian media. No, we're not. Right. Do you know how big complex is? Do you know how small <laughs> Rapzilla is? There's three of us on, on Rapzilla that are full time dedicated. And one of them is Chad and he's the owner. And, you know, right. he's got a day job. So, like, so as far as a day job, there's two people at Rabzilla. There's me and Steven Solis. And we are the only mm-hmm. ones who run all of Rabzilla. We get, you know, almost 500 submissions a week. We got the ads. We got the wow. playlist. We got all the interviews. And, and, and Steven doesn't write. Steven does all the back-end stuff. So then all that other posting and going through the submissions and all that stuff, that falls on me. And then we're blessed with um, a couple of contributors, uh, freelancers that help us out like here and there, or at least we have ideas to throw back and forth. Like they're another set of eyes because I can't see right. everything. Um, and, you know, unfortunately not in the position to pay them right now. But I was like, yo, I will do anything for you guys. You And most of them are younger, like in college. So it's like you need that letter of recommendation. You need me to edit your paper. <laughs> you know, for for that's really final, dope, though. That's really dope, final, though. That's dope. You know, you need yeah. help finding another job. You know, you need advice on on college or journalism. Anybody you want an interview, any album, early sneak peek you want, like I got you. You guys are helping me out, so I owe you whatever you need. Um, mm. So that's that's basically that's how we're operating right now, and the hope is to grow so we can get like a complex, right. Have and I, I think that's really that cool that, that that you offer that to people, you know what I mean? Because it, it also, like a lot of people would be like, we don't have any money to hire anybody, so we can't get the work done. End of story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you, you find a solution and, you know, you kind of leverage what you have and you bring value to them, you know, by offering all of those incentives. That's really dope. Yeah, yeah man. Because I, I know, I know if I've been, I've been in that position, you know, I've been on the other side. That magazine that I ran for four years, ran it like a full-time job. I never made a cent off of that magazine. And I did that for four years. I edited every article. You know, I helped do Mm. the layout of the magazine printing. I was at festivals. We, we never, me me and the, the owner, we never made a dollar. We did it because we loved it. We did it um, because there was experience to be gained. Like without that experience of doing that, I would, I would be nowhere now. Mm. Like I I learned how to interview artists. I learned how to hustle I learned how to, uh, I wouldn't say lie, but like give off like the persona of like, yo, like we're a legit magazine, even though like we weren't, but I was able to have, you know, that confidence. Like I can interview anybody. Speaking by faith. Right. Right. It was (laughs) just like, yo, like we literally got no budget, but like we're standing in a room with somebody who, um, you know, sold over a million albums. I got to be on, on Chris Jericho's tour bus. Chris wow. Jericho. Yeah. Chris Jericho is in a band called Fozzy, and we interviewed his band Fozzy. We didn't get him. Someone else was interviewing him. We got his guitar player. But Jericho was across the and I said You're breathing the, the same hall. air. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tour bus. This is a tour bus that had hallways and and wow. bedrooms. That's how wow. big this tour bus was. So wow. he was like on the other side, and we were sitting at the kitchen table interviewing someone. And I and I'm holding a camera and the other guy's talking to him, and I'm just like, yo, like. What is this? I was like, this. I'm Chris Jericho's like 15 feet away from me right now. Why am I even here? Um, so it's like, right. so like, I totally get it. Like, you know, I've been blessed and fortunate to have opportunities thrown my way. Um, and because of like the small spaces that I've been in, I've actually been able to elevate myself quicker. Like mm-hmm. I ran a whole magazine because there was literally nobody else to do it. Mm-hmm. Was I qualified for it? Probably not. But I got to do it and I became right. qualified. When I got to the Christian Post, it was just like a bunch of, you know, it, it was, I'm going to try to speak nicely about them. 
Um, right. There was very chaotic management style. And because of a lot of the dysfunction that was there, I was able to elevate myself quicker because I was like, well, I just have to be better than the dysfunctional thing next to me. And I was able to right, keep going, right. going. And then the same thing with Rabzilla. Yo, there's no one else to do it. All right, I'll do it. And I was able to get that experience that normally they're like, yo, if you want to be an editor of a website, you need like 15 years editor experience. Wow. And then, and then when you get there, you're like, well, how do you get that editor experience if you need the 15 years of editorial experience? I don't know. You figure it out. So I got it. I was, I was able <laughs> so to do it. So you figured it out. I figured it out. <laughs> you fast tracked it. <laughs> you were like, I'm right. going to do this. <laughs> right, right. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a really dope journey. Uh, super blessed. Love what I do. You know, I get, I just get to talk to people and, and tell stories of, of, you know, people's lives for a living. So now during this journey, when was it that you met the Lord or like, was your family always in church? Did you uh, graduate? And then, you know, like, what was that transition? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's way back. So I grew up, I grew up in the church. Uh, my uncle actually had a Spanish-speaking church in Queens um, in the early 90s. I, I don't remember what the church was, but he was he was 19 years old, and he was the lead pastor of this church that he wow. founded. Wow, and, you know, 19. big big Puerto Rican family, you know, there's like 500 of us, whatever, cousins, <laughs> uncles, whatever. Um, Iglesia but, La Gracia. Yeah. So my whole family, my whole family was in hmm. that church. Um, so my uncle got everybody saved, you know, my grandparents, my, you know, my mom, my aunts, wow. um, you know, everybody. So from the oh, time I was it. like, I was, you know, two, three years old, I'd been in the church. Now a definitive moment that I remember is you guys know who Carmen is, right? Yeah. 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 The old school, uh, <laughs> singer, nineties rapper, singer, yeah. pioneer, <laughs> 90s rapper, spoken word rapper, um, right? That was a memorable interview for him. We could talk about that later, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he used to have his huge like crusade concerts and we had one on VHS at my house. I was like five years old. I remember we, we popped it into the, to the VCR player and I was watching it and he did an altar call at the end. And like I said, the altar call, like I went with Carmen at the end of that video. <laughs> and that's the first like conscious, like, actual memory of like okay like i'm a christian now or whatever right. it was so that was when i was five years old and then wow. just growing up through the church you know growing up around christian music my parents owned a christian bookstore too uh from like 98 to 2003 maybe 2004 mm -hmm. so like i always had i always had the latest music I always, where was that at that, that Staten island oh Staten Staten island. Island. they had one wow. yeah um so yeah, I always had the music. I always had the. Yo, that's wild! How like that was the only mm -hmm. way you can you can get to like Christian hip hop was like whatever the, the yeah the, the Bible bookstore had, and like for me, mm -hmm. I remember it was like in '99. I just happened to be in the Bible bookstore picking up a Bible, right? I, I wanted a Bible, and they had this like the CD player where you could listen to music before you buy it, and yeah. there there was a magazine there. It was like eight ball or something like that. Do y'all remember that? I think it was called eight ball or something like that. And it had it had a, a CD mixer, uh, like a sampler CD. And I just copped it because you know I listened to it. There was a couple of rap um, songs in there that I liked. Cross movement was one of them. But it's just it's just wild now how you it's so easy to discover Christian hip hop music, you know, versus back then. Like if you wasn't in the right. Bible bookstore, you weren't. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You well, were if you ain't see them true. perform, you you wouldn't right. You, you get your hands right. Yeah, I mean, they, right. they might have not even have, have been allowed at your church at that point too. True, that right. part too. Right. Facts. Yep. Because mm -hmm. yeah, hip hop right. wasn't allowed. Even as I remember interviewing Tadashi, and he told me, even back in two thousand and six, he'd be going to a church, and they they told him like, "Yo, you can't do that in here. You got to go to the wow. back, the backyard, or like the youth center." <laughs> wow. It's two thousand and six. Mm -hmm. um you know i i know it's not like that anymore but you know the church or and, the church and christian music are always like you know 15 20 years behind like first rock and roll was the devil's music right and then yep. then you had a couple of people come out and like oh this isn't so bad all right hip-hop is definitely from the devil now uh that that's <laughs> the new thing that's from the devil um and then you you know you grow out of that but yeah 
and and the funny thing is like i wasn't even into i wasn't even into like really christian hip-hop like that either like uh i listened to dc talk when i was growing up which right. you know oh, wow. people got their feelings about that whether that was real hip-hop or not but that was like the only hip-hop i knew and right. then I, when in the early 2000s i got really into like youth group type rap so your KJ five twos, your John Rubens. Uh, right. I was listening to some T Bone back then, uh, but then I started playing music. I started playing drums. Uh, I was in a bunch of bands, so I was like listening to all rock music, mm -hmm. uh, and then you know some secular hip hop. Um, you know, Eminem, G Unit, Fifty Cent, all of them started popping popping off in the mid two thousands. So like that's what I was listening to. I had no idea anything about Christian rap. Um, right. Until I started with that company, Breathecast, and then they're like, oh, we got this this guy, Lecrae. Lecrae had just dropped um, Anomaly. And they're like, wow, yo, so we, that was we, pretty recent. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, we got this guy named Lecrae. He just dropped Anomaly. Uh, he's one of the biggest Christian rappers. I had no idea who Lecrae was. I didn't know anything about the whole Reach Records on a shame movement that like right. swept CHH. I knew nothing. <laughs> nothing about that, like, other than, you know, T Bone, KG52, John Rubin, like those, those are the only things I <laughs> ill, Mars ill, maybe. Um, and I'm just like, all right, cool. Have this, have him come in. This should be dope. And then, you know, we had KB in and we had Triple E and Tadashi was there. Um, but we didn't, but that was it. It was just like the Reach guys. Yeah. yeah. So like it was none of, you know, his CHH What's was right huge. Now? CHH was mm -hmm. huge. Even Derek Minor came in one time. I think he might have still been pro. Um, wow. And it's funny because I told him, because, uh, you know, I, I, talked to, I talked to Derek a bit. You know, we're pretty cool. And I'm like, bro, you came into my job and I had no idea who you were. Like, I didn't even go and be part of your interview. Like, I shook your hand and then I went and sat down and got back to work. I was like, yo, who is this guy? I have no idea who this guy is. And I was who's like, so I'm guy? sorry. I'm sorry. But now we do excellent interviews and stories together. So we made up. We made up for it. Right. <laughs> nice. So what was your most uh, memorable interview that you would think that you had? Man, the most memorable ones are the really bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to out people, though. Yeah. Um, right. Because it's some people that are like, that guy? Um, Yo, did I, did, I, did, I see you, did I see you interview P.O.D.? I've interviewed Or am I P. tripping? I, uh, Sonny from P.O.D. I've yeah. interviewed him three times. And I'm actually interviewing him tomorrow, actually. Wow. Which is, oh, which wow. Is weird. Look at that. Yeah, An exclusive, time. guys. You hear that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's your exclusive. Fourth time for the rapper uh, Thomas Iannucci. He's got, he's got Sonny on his, his new album that's dropping. Oh, um, wow. So I'm going okay. to interview them together. Um, nice. I mean, that was a memorable interview for me because I was a huge POD fan. Right. Uh, you were like backstage at the Warp Tour, right? Uh, that was... What was that? No, that wasn't Warp Tour. That was, um, I think that was a might have been called "Scream It Like You Mean It," okay, or something like that. Yeah, I just remember seeing it, and 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 there was like On loud YouTube? music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was the last time I interviewed him. Actually, wow. um, what's really funny about that was was um, here's a little here's a little secret. So the band Papa Roach was supposed mm -hmm. to headline that tour. Mm -hmm. um but they canceled day of because the singer's voice gave out and he needed surgery wow. well it turns out the guitar player of papa roach is chad's brother Bro. what chad's that's, brother uh, uh, jerry horton is the guitar player of papa roach that's chad's brother wow. <laughs> so i've come yeah, a lot of wild. i've come a lot of full circle and we were supposed to interview papa roach that day but they weren't there because they canceled on the tour wow so, <laughs> look at that yeah that would have been crazy but That's yeah, Sonny, Sonny was definitely memorable. Um, Scott Stapp from Creed was memorable. We, I spent like two days with him. Um, Toby Mac, just because I was such a, a huge um, Toby Mac fan, DC Talk fan. Uh, the first time I interviewed him, I was with Christian Post. And I was okay. Like, I was really nervous. You know, I was, I'm not where I, I'm not where I am now as far as, I was still like really like fanboying people back then when it was like <laughs> yeah, yeah. i was so nervous and it was just on the phone but i got him to do um to talk exclusively about old school chh for rapzilla mm -hmm. 
like his album elements had just come out and i was like i do not care one single thing about elements uh because he's going to talk <laughs> but because that that's how i that's how i think when i do an yeah. interview like if you're promoting an album you're going to go on this press tour and all you're going to do is talk about talk this about album. it you can right. get those answers anywhere right i don't care about this album I want to know about Toby Mac that mm -hmm. was rapping in 1989, you know, mm -hmm. 1990, what the Dove Awards were like back then when there was like no such thing as hip hop, what it was like rapping with Stephen Wiley, who like basically invented CHH, uh, D-Boy Rodriguez, wow. who was, you know, the rapper who, who was murdered in right. the street. Like I, I, so I was asking Toby about that. I was like, what are those early conversations with Stephen Wiley? Like, what do you remember about D-Boy Rodriguez, you know? Uh, tell me the story of how DC Talk was allowed to become a rap group, um, and essentially that that didn't they story, get awards for that, right? Uh, yeah, they they won a lot of awards. But here's so so Toby was like, "Yo, I haven't said some of these stories in thirty years." And when I when he said that, I was like, "This is it. This is this it. is the one. Yeah. This is going to be crazy because I'm gonna be able to tell a story that nobody knows or that nobody's heard in like thirty years." And him telling me the story about how DC Talk was acceptable in churches because he was white and rapping and the black guy was the one who sang mm. wow had it been reversed they would have Different never story. been able to get accepted um and they used to con people into into allowing rap at the church um and like michael tate the singer um you know he's the the black one in the group he's now the singer of newsboys yeah he would go out and sing like he was in the choir and Toby Mac was was his sound guy, um, and he'd be like, so Michael would be singing. He'd be performing at Liberty University at like their convocation um, meetings, or, you know, their chapel or whatever. He'd be like, hey, I'd like to invite my friend up to do a little something uh, with me. I think you guys might like it. It might be cool. Like they played it like real low key. Yeah. Um, and Toby would come up, and you you're expecting to see like this white kid with long blonde hair at the time. He's not gonna rap. They just thought he was going to sing with Michael. And then all of a sudden, he's <laughs> and, you know, they start beatboxing and then he's rapping and they're like, oh, this is cool. Like, we'll allow this. This is all right. right. Um, and that's basically how DC Talk started conning their way into playing in churches <laughs> wow. Wow. and how hip hop uh, became accepted as, as like a Christian medium of music. And like hearing that story from Toby Mac was just like, yo. Like that was one of my most memorable times ever. Wow. And then, and wow, then speaking to Carmen and then telling Carmen the story, I was like, yo, I got saved listening to your VHS tape and him not even responding. And it just being radio silence. <laughs> it was just, wow. It's pretty awkward. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was a really weird, I'll, I'll say it cause no offense. Carmen's not listening to this. Carmen was one of my worst <laughs> interviews ever. <laughs> um, um, editor, just make a star on this part, please. Uh, yeah, if, if Carmen's listening, like you guys are doing pretty well. Um, but like, you know, we gonna send it to him. Damn. It was such a weird. It was such a weird interview. Like he had just beaten cancer. You know, mm -hmm. I was talking to him about this album that he had coming out, and I'm like, you know, we're talking about all this stuff, and he's not giving me like anything good. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, like, was he what's, dry? It, what's it was like? He... You know, you know, you man, you just, you just beat cancer. Like, what's it like? You just beat cancer and, you know, you're dropping this album. Like, how does it feel or whatever? And he's like, you know, I feel good. <laughs> it was like, that was it. <laughs> I was like, question one, done. And I'm like, oh no. I knew right from the jump. I was like, yo, it's going to be bad. Right. And this is like a legend. And I was like, this, this can't happen. Like, how He's, am I not media up, train. He's not media yeah. train. <laughs> How am I going to fill up another 40 minutes of like an interview slot that I got with him? If he's answer, I have like 12 questions. You just answer one of them in 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but see, so oddly enough, it was when I started talking about his role in hip hop of, of Christian rap, he yeah. started lighting up. I was like, wow. why do you think you were allowed? You know, you, you were successful back then. He's like, you know, because I was really genuine with it. And, you know, and I was like, yo, people listen, not trying to hear Carmen do raps now. They <laughs> right. probably weren't trying to hear it back then either. But like me as like a seven year old, I was like, this is dope. Right. Um, but like he went off on that. He gave me like a solid like 20 minutes on that. And then at the end, I was like, yeah, man, I want to tell you part of my testimony. It was like, you know, I popped in your VHS and, you know, I got saved to the altar call. And it was just like, 
You just shut down again? <laughs> Nothing. And I was like, oh. all right, yeah. So anyway, thanks. <laughs> thanks for the <laughs> He was like, all right, bye. I was like, dang. I was like, all right, man. Well, got that out of the way. Oh, that was tough. <laughs> That's crazy. Man, yeah. Crazy. Wow. It, so that what, what's awkward. Good. I was going to ask, um, you know, going back just a little bit when it comes to schooling and stuff, did you always want to like niche down into like the Christian uh, world or did you want to be like a, a newscaster on like, you know, ABC or CBS or anything like that when it comes yeah, to Yeah, it, it's funny. I mean, because like I've always loved music my whole life, always. Uh, and then being in bands and stuff, I was like, let's let one hand wash the other. The, the real goal was if I become a music journalist, I can help my music career by putting me to these places that will help right. get me seen. That never happened <laughs> uh, because, you know, we all know how hard it is to make it in music, but also, you know, it's just conflicts of, of interest and different stuff like that. But even at the same time, like it, it just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't in the cards for what I was doing, but, but that was like the whole focus. I was like, I'm going to become a music journalist so I can become a famous musician. Um, and then it's like, I have this job I could fall back on. And at least it's writing about music. Cause I've always loved writing, um, you know, enjoyed writing. I never really saw anything else that I wanted to do aside from, from write. That was, that was actually obtainable that I felt like I could do. Um, so I did actually work for the Staten Island newspaper as an intern for like six months, actually doing like everyday news like knocking on people's doors, asking for quotes and stories and stuff. Wow. When I was like oh, wow. 19 years old, um, you know, find, writing about certain neighborhoods in Staten Island, going to, I don't think I ever did a crime scene, but like going to places after like something happened and getting reactions from people. Um, so like, and it was print, actual print newspaper journalism. So wow. like I've actually been able to experience, again, this goes back to like the blessings of like that I've had. I've been able to experience print newspaper, print magazine, and then now like blogging and, and digital. you know, the digital space, you know, I've been able now, to do podcasting and videos and everything. That, awesome. That's, that's interesting, right? About you working at a, at a, a, a news firm, right? Um, what, what are your thoughts when like, cause just since you experienced that firsthand and then now there's all this fake news fake media stuff like that a lot of bias yeah like what what is your perspective on that is it is it true or is it just exaggerated or is it possible like what what are your thoughts on on the whole fake news angle yeah just news in general just how how Um, it is see well I'm, i'm always happy it's like yo like i'm not really part of the fake news thing because i'm doing entertainment and then like and and now especially doing christian entertainment so actually, to, to just answer Jay's question, like, no, I wasn't necessarily trying to be a, a Christian music journalist uh, because that Broken Records wasn't a Christian magazine. Um, but it just so happened that that was my first job that I got offered. And, you know, you become an expert in a space, right? So I've right. just moved mm-hmm. to a different asset of Christian music, which was the one I knew least about, ironically, um, yeah. and then yeah. went to Rapzilla. But yeah, yeah. so as, as far as the, the fake news thing, um, you know, it's, it's such a hard time for media now because, you know, everyone's like clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. Um, mm-hmm. but like, yo, nobody reads anything. They like, they right. read your headlines and they react. They mm-hmm. never even click on the story. Switch. They never even click on the story. They just react on the headline. So like you have to come up with sometimes I, I don't like to do it, but you have to come up with misleading headlines because like, dang, like we need the click or we're, we're not getting paid. Like ESPN, what did they, ESPN, I think just laid off 2000 people. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. When I was working at the Staten Island newspaper in 2010, um, I would walk in sometimes on a Monday and the office space could probably fit maybe 60 people. And there was maybe like 20 people there, 25 people. And 10 of them were interns, unpaid interns with me being one of them. Now this is 10 years later. Um, so I could only imagine what that space looks like now. There's probably like 10 people there. Right. Um, so it's, it's hard out there. I think that most news isn't fake. I think that most news has elements of truth in it or most of the truth in it. But you get 
um, what, what skews the news is, is people's leanings. So whether you're liberal or conservative, you have this leaning, this inclination towards one side right. and that kind of skews it. So it might not necessarily be fake, but it's going to be real for at least one of the sides it that has a bias that, right. that subscribes to that. I always say like, if both sides of the fence hate you, then you're doing a great job because then that means you're right down the middle, right? Ah, the liberals hate me. The conservatives hate me. That means I'm telling the truth. That means my story is so good because yeah, yeah. you're, because someone is not coming at you, you know, in support from one side. Um, and I think when you just, there is a ton of fake news, but like, I, I wouldn't consider that real news. That's like things you share on Facebook, right? Or, or right. things that get shared on Twitter. They're basically like memes, like memes, memes with, with an article underneath it mm. that anyone comes up with and everyone's like, Oh, it's just fake news. I'm like, no, no, no. This isn't like the wall street journal. This isn't the New York <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like some dude's blog who gave their opinion and you believed it and right. were led astray. Um, and now, you know, you're reading fake news. Um, That's good so stuff. yeah, I, I think that the truth always lies somewhere in the middle between both sides, but people play it either sides, play it up for, you know, for their perspective audience, it's really hard. It's really hard to not hold a bias on something. Right. Um, and you know, I've, I've been there like artists. I respect, like I tell artists all the time, I'm like, yo, please don't do something so dumb in a negative fashion that I have to write about you because like, I like you. Like I respect you. <laughs> we go pot acting, about you. <laughs> yeah. But, like you're acting crazy. And my job would be to write about you acting crazy. And it's not going to be personal. You know, I still got love for you, but like, I'm just doing my job. Like I'm telling the story. I'm not trying to say, yo, like this dude's acting up. He's crazy. Everybody yeah. stop following him. Now I'm just going to give it to you straight. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of what I've always tried to like maintain that integrity, but it's so hard in the Christian space because everybody knows each other and we all see each other yep. and, you know, right. we're all interviewing the same people, you know, we're all at the yep. same conferences. You become friends with people and then you've got people texting you, yo bro, like, can we do an interview tomorrow? And we, you know, right. You know, we'll do a dope interview about my project. And it's like, I guess, but like, <laughs> but it's like, it's really not, that's not how it's supposed to work. Like you, you don't call up, you know, Rolling Stone and be like, yo, let me get that interview. Let me get that front page. Let me get and that they, cover. Right. And if they do, it's like, yo, let me get that front cover. And Rolling Stone goes, okay, it's $45,000 to get the mm. front cover story. And then the label shells that out. Like that ain't mm. happening. Mm. That ain't happening with, with us at Rapzilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I might just get a, a nasty subtweet at me. That's about it. <laughs> so, so since you're teasing this, is since since you're since you're bringing since you're bringing that up, um, how should artists reach out to you? You know what I mean? Because you said you said you get what five? You do five hundred reviews or something a week? We, I get I get probably five hundred um, music submissions a week, Ooh. and and that that's usually I'm gonna guess that it's that, usually a hey, bro, a hey, bro, check out my mixtape, support oh. the ministry. Right, five hundred. Some of them, yeah. I go. I, I'll tell people now watching this. I read every single email, so it really? annoys me to no end when people hit my personal email or they hit my text message. Yo, bro, I sent you an email. I was like, I know, I'm the I only one who goes to the emails. I saw it. Yo, bro, wow. you gonna post me? Yeah, man. Sorry, I have five hundred emails in front of you. I got you. I'm behind. Don't worry. There's that many CHH rappers out there? <laughs> well, then you get the same guys who was like, well, you know, I sent it in one time and, and they didn't uh, respond. So <laughs> let me send the same exact email seven other times and see if they respond. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, some of it's like not relevant emails. Some right. you know, people just submitting to whatever websites. That, anytime I see the name Rapzilla in quotes, I just know that someone copy and pasted something and then just pasted the rapzilla in between the quotes right all right so that one gets deleted <laughs> uh anytime i see like an email that has like 17 to 20 different other websites on it i was like well this wasn't just to me like when they just they no just cc everybody touch. right they cc yeah. everybody right, it's right. Not, like personalized right, to right. You. Like it's, rap, <laughs> it's like Rapzilla, track stars new h2o you know complex whatever they're on okay that one's deleted um <laughs> 
because it's like, yo, there's an etiquette to this thing. And there's a contact right. page. I wrote the contact page on Rabzilla. I even within the contact page wrote a whole guidelines on do's and don'ts on how to submit. It's every, I, I dropped like, a, like 1200 words on everybody. Wow. And you could read any of those words and find good things from there not to do, but people continue to do it. I dropped my artist <laughs> tips on Twitter. You know, I, I actually have a book that I'm working on that COVID delayed uh, just because of time constraints um, that I've taken all my artist tip tweets and there's like 150 of oh, them. Oh, that's dope. And I've expounded on every single tweet that I have, you know, a couple wow. of paragraphs. And it's just going to be a book of all artist tips and etiquette on, you know, how to properly that's good. You know, speak to people. Um, right. So I'm, I'm going to, I'll be dropping that. I was supposed to drop it this spring, but you know, things. You got a name for that? Uh, I do, but I can never remember it because it's long. So my whole podcast and everything <laughs> I got is called, and the interviews I do like on my own is called Survival of the Artist. I get the survival mm -hmm. of the artist podcast, and that's where I have artists on talk about tips of the trade and how they, you know, survive as an artist in this climate. You know, that's separate from Rapzilla. So it's something yeah. like survival, survival of the artist, tips and trades, tips and tricks, how to make it or whatever. I haven't looked at it in a while. It, so, yeah. you know, it's it's a work in progress. So let me ask you this. So you're going through these 500 emails or whatever. This is for Rapzilla. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have New H2O. And you doing the same? Yeah. So we bought new H2O with the anticipation that that was going to be kind of like the minor leagues of mm -hmm. Rapzilla. So it's like, you're not quite ready to get on Rapzilla, but we see the potential. So we'll throw you on new H2O. But then we realized like we're kind of competing with ourselves on that. Uh, hmm. um, so we redesigned and we reformatted the whole website to be like a completely different um, com concept and man we we like launched it two months ago we relaunched it and mm. the whole website broke like when we relaunched it oh, it was wow. working fine and then we launched it and the whole website stopped working oh, um, so it's kind of just been sitting in limbo um i don't really know where it's at I, you know we're working on it but it, it's kind of dead right now until we bring it back but essentially the concept and I, i'll give this to you guys um is it's going to be like a, a ranker based system. So people are going to come onto the website and let's just, let's just, for instance, you got like Lecrae, Andy Minio, Derek Minor, uh, Triple E right there, the four songs. Right. And then people will press like the up arrow or, you know, the down arrow. And then it gets oh, like that wow. website ranker, right, but it's right. going to be with Indie CHH, like the up and coming artist. So That's people really will dope. submit for that. And then like the winner of the week, you know, we're, we'll give them a placement on Rapzilla, like Rapzilla. the playlist, nice. whatever. The winner of the month, you know, maybe we'll give them an ad or something. The winner of the year we'll, might get like some uh, package and, you know, get involved with a beat or something from OB. Like, you know, we, we were working out like all the kinks for that stuff. But basically mm -hmm. a chance to have indie artists have their fans come and vote for them or for people to discover guys that they may have never heard of before that may not make it onto Rapzilla, but it gives us an opportunity and gives people an opportunity to, you know, to get leveled up and get discovered. And then those people get rewarded uh, for that. And then they graduate off of new H2O and they, they come to Rapzilla. Rapzilla. So that's nice. the new concept, that's but the cool. whole arrows and the clicking thing, it like broke on the website. So we're, we're trying to, <laughs> the whole concept that was supposed to work, like you press the arrow and then that happens. That's what broke. Um, <laughs> So that's a great that's, idea though. That's yeah. Dope, like yeah that. Thanks. So that, that was, that was all Chad Horton. That was like his vision on that. Um, I'm kind of glad that's not there now. Cause that's more work I'd have to work on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get those 500 submissions, not including, you know, my personal email, not including all the artists DMing me on Instagram, not including wow. all the ones DMing me on Twitter, right. on my personal Facebook page. So everybody uh, listening. Be patient, man. Right. A lot Yo, and follow the instructions too. Not he, only the does man he say he wrote, are there. He's, yeah, he said the instructions <laughs> are there. Read the instructions follow and them. follow them. Follow them <laughs> for a T to a T. I have to set these rules and stipulations in place because there's so many. Like mm. you might drop the dopest song ever, but like you don't provide a profile picture and like links to your social media. You know, now I got to take extra time repost, yeah. and they're like, oh, what? It's another five to 10 minutes. Yeah. Five to 10 minutes. But you add that to like a hundred posts that I got to yeah. do 
that's a lot of time. So I have to skip you. And it might, it might hurt, but it's like, nah, like, I'm sorry. Like this was super dope. And I, but you didn't follow the rules. Right. And this person next in line did, and you should get rewarded for following the rules. Mm -hmm. Um, right. and that, that's kind of how I, I have to put that system in my play in, in place. Otherwise I'm going to be just doing submissions forever. Right. Um, and that's true. Cause yeah, you have other exactly. things on your plate too. I got to do the interviews. Submission. I got to post the stories. I got to do right. the social media. Um, right. but submissions take up a big, big chunk of that. Um, so any, so the, and this goes for any website though, for any artist listening, make the, the person who's reading the emails job so easy. I don't want to have to click or go anywhere. Your your name is there. Your bio is there. Your press pictures, your links, everything's in one shot. This is what I'm about. Here it is. Take it. And more often, and, and do it professionally, not like, yo, sup fam, uh, this is my new <laughs> single. Because um, we get people like that. And I'm like, yo, I don't yeah. know you. Like, <laughs> you can't say like, sup fam, check it out. Like, I don't know who you are. You don't, like, you wouldn't meet somebody like that and like dap them up that way. If you meet someone right. for the first time, like you're going to shake their hand, you'd be a little proper. And kind of um, introduce yourself. Yeah. Like, no, first of all, first of all, right. And first of all, like sometimes they're not even following you, you know, and it is, it's like, bro, you could at least follow and engage or something like that before you, <laughs> you go ahead and ask for, you know what I mean? To be on the site or something like that, or a I, repost or something like I, that. I've had a an artist, I've had an artist try to be my friend like on the download so that I can put him on Rapzilla. Uh, see? Uh, and he exposed himself too, which was He exposed awesome. himself? Yeah, like and it was one of those situations where I didn't I didn't get to his song. Like, you know, I've been talking to, to excuse me, I've been talking to this artist for a while. Um, you know, just casual, you know, whatever on Twitter talking. And he sent in a song and it might have only been like three or four days. And he's like, yo, man, you're going to post my song or not? Little did wow. he know wow. that I actually had just finished posting his song. Like really? minutes before that. Oh, and he's wow. like, wow. and I was like, so I was like, okay. I was like, man, like I got a lot going on. Like I didn't get a chance. Like I didn't say I didn't get a chance to post, but I was like, yeah, I was like really behind, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, come on, man. He's like, I'm in here. You know, I bought advertisement. You know, I, I. You know, I paid you to write me a press release. I haven't been talking to you all this time and you can't even get me on Rapzilla. And I was like, wow. oh, I was like, oh, OK, <laughs> nice. Thanks. Peace. <laughs> I was like, you got the block. Is, oh, that, common? Uh, Is that common in the in, in the industry, in the media crazy. industry? It's not common for them to admit it, but it's definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's definitely. You definitely have like your ideas, like, yo, this person keeps talking to me. Why are they talking to me all the time? And then it's like, hey, bro, you know, something. you know, I got this album dropping on Friday. And I'm like, oh, cool. Send it to send it to Rapzilla. He's like, yeah, but what's your email? I was like, I'll see it. Don't worry. Or they're like, bro, what's your number? I'm like, no, email is the best place to be. Telegram or whatever. Yeah, they I think they have artists, the easy pass to you, right? I give these artists my number sometimes and they, they don't stop texting me or calling me. I was like, yo, oh, wow. hit my email. Like, so, you know, I got a family. I got things I'm doing. Like, right. you don't know when to call me or they'll call me like, you know, you know, I'm not trying to say I'm more busy than the next person, but like, yo, if you're approaching me for business, like schedule an appointment, be like, yo, man, like, are you free at three o'clock tomorrow or you know, five o'clock later, don't just call me right. at like 11 a.m. Like when I'm watching my kids or when I'm eating right. dinner or something like that. Yeah, so right, like, right. like I'm not quick to give out my number like that. I was like, yo, you need me? There's Rapzilla's email. And if we build some sort of rapport, you know, then we we talk, we, we get on with something else. Mm. Thanks. Wow. Thanks. Yo, this is That's good. Hectic. Thing, man. All yeah. you artists out there, pay attention. Get that book when it drops too. <laughs> yeah i dropped like, all seeing all these artist tips have already been on my twitter for free so i've been dropping i've been dropping free game for years mm, now you're not, now you guys gonna pay for it and it's right, still i was to say they're not listening they're not reading now they gotta <laughs> <Yeah>. pay <laughs> I've, I've had people approach me that'd be like yo man like i learned a lot and then the, i'll get that next email and i was like i touched Would another you? one <laughs> like, I, <reached laughs> out, I, his soul. I was like you yo, did I saw that you, first email and that second one was much better. Yo, you didn't give him the, the silent treatment like Harmon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's like, uh, who are you? <laughs> <What's that? laughs> 
<laughs> nah, man. Yeah. I mean, Twitter's the twi- and everyone watching like Twitter's the place to communicate with me. Like, you want to send me a DM on on Twitter? You want to tweet at me? Like, I'm always on Twitter. My DMs are open. Don't don't creep. Don't like stalk me out on on Facebook or or uh, that's you know, weird. Be DMing me on on pictures that I'm posted of my son and then being like, yo. You know that your kids are cute. Uh, what about my next <laughs> single? Like I've had that. Yo, like I've oh, had people man. like asking uh, about, yo, how do I get on Rapzilla? Like on a post of my son, and I'm like, cute uh, kid. Uh, by the way, have you heard my mixtape? <laughs> yeah, like I hate that. I hate nah, that. Don't man. solicit your links either. <laughs> Unless they didn't put the links. They didn't put the links under the kids' pictures, did they? <laughs> well, I guess, yeah, they would have. They would have if it was an Instagram where. Oh, you know, right. <laughs> Whether not clickable. Like, yo, unless I'm asking you for a link. Don't send me a link because it is 100% guaranteed I will not listen to you regardless of who you are. Unless we're cool <laughs> like that and, and you you tag me or like, I'm like, oh, Justin's tagged in a post. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. I don't remember being in this picture. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's somebody's mixtape cover or, or they're yeah. single and it's like, yo, Justin. And I'm tagged in it and I'm like, yeah, cool. I wasn't there. Why am I tagged in this? I didn't ask for this. Right. That's um, crazy. Yeah. That's a it's, lot. It's, it's a wild west. Chasing, man. It's, it's cloud chasing. West. But let me ask you this. How does that feel, though? Because coming from where you came from and worked your way up to now be in a position where dudes basically fighting for your attention. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, how does I get that, it. Yeah, yeah. I, get, I mean, I've been there, but... You know, I always extend grace. It's not like I never like yell at people or whatever. But at the same time, like when I was 19, 20, 21 years old, trying to become a musician, like trying mm-hmm. to get somewhere, I was always respectful. Like nobody, I had nobody to teach me, but I always right. sent like a respectful email. I never expected to get put on. You know, mm-hmm. I built my relationships organically. That's how I've been able to get to where I'm at. I showed you guys like almost every step of the way. It involves some right. sort of relationship and hustle to like get onto that next point yeah. but there's there's proper ways to hustle like spamming the crap out of somebody is not <laughs> that's not hustle hustling. that's not no, hustle. That's not, yeah. that's not christian right? either yeah like, like <laughs> yo like build build talk to people like if i'm dropping it or anybody if they're dropping posts like engage with those posts but like conversate like i don't just talk about music all day like no. i don't even because because my job is to write about music and I get so much music, it's unfortunate. Like, I don't really enjoy music anymore mm. because to me, music wow. is work, mm-hmm. right? So when they're like, yo, who's your favorite, you know, CHH artist or like, what album are you bumping right now? And I'm like, I'm not really bumping any album because I've had to listen to like 50 of them this week. Like, you know, mm. I, don't have, I don't have time to go back and get that replay value on something. It's like, all right, right. listen. I listen to Dayton's new Because you're on to the album. next one, right? Yep. I listen to Dayton's new album. All right, now let's check out Jared Sanders. All right, now mm. let's check out his Glory Alone album. And it's like, I rarely have time to revisit. So like, it's really the song or the artist really, really has to catch my eye or my ear when it's like, yo, this is special. Um, and unfortunately, like, it's super hard because I just have music coming in everywhere. Um, that like music is no longer my escape for things, which right. is unfortunate. Um, yeah, but like, I'm not trying to talk about music like all the time. Like I was like, let's talk about <laughs> movies. Let's talk about sports. Right. Right. Let's talk about whatever, but please leave me out of your CHH drama. Leave me out of whatever's <laughs> going on. It's like, this is my job. I'm not on the clock right now. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That is That's crazy. tough though. I mean, cause you, like I said, that this is something you love and it kind of, you know what I'm saying? People fighting for that, for that, you know, for that yeah. next post or that next whatever yeah. it is that they're looking for a review or and and it's like, dang, you you don't got it's worn like you're out. using me. You using right, me. Right, you know what I'm saying? They got you know? worn out. You you got into this position. You I won. am. Yeah. Man. The submissions uh, wear me out, man. Yeah. Like I'll yeah. never grow tired of actually um interviewing people and, and speaking to people like this and telling stories like uh, mm-hmm. We do we do that community during chaos show. Yeah, I, I saw that. I caught that. Yeah. Every Monday night, three three different artists every week. I've done it for twenty five straight weeks. Coming this next Monday, wow, that would be wow. 70, Congrats, 75 man. people I've interviewed in wow. twenty five weeks. Um, that 
that takes a toll that, I mean, you think, oh, there's not even 75 people in CHH. Well, yeah, there is because there's still like another 200 people that I haven't interviewed. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, I'm, I'm taking a break. Like this Monday will be my last episode. um, And then I'm going to bring it back in the new year, but you know, I need a break, but it's not that I need a break because like, oh, I hate this. Like I can't do it anymore. So like, yo, I'm, I'm like exhausted. It, it right. takes a lot out to interview three people every single week. And I got to edit those videos and I got to get everything together um, and create stories. So I just need a break to catch up on more work actually, and to right. do other interviews. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, I love telling people stories and I haven't actually written an interview, like an actual sat down and like wrote a story. I think since like, may or june because i've just been doing all these lives and i was like yo i need to write like writing was my thing so i need to i need to get back in touch with that therapy for you right 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 and people don't like reading articles anyway so i know i write like i could write like the greatest article of all time and be like all right cool thanks for reading the headline guys (laughs) (laughs) um, but like for me i feel good and and the artist hits me up like yo man that story was dope and then to me that's like that that's impactful. Like when the artist, like, yo, man, this is the best interview someone ever wrote about me. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. cool, I did my job. Like, that's what I love. Um, and that that's something I won't get tired of. Submissions, so definitely. I'm tired of them now. <laughs> They're the necessary part of the job. <laughs> that's what's up. Well, well uh, yeah, Justin, uh, thanks for coming on. And uh, where can people find you? Where can they contact you or whatever the case is? And uh, whatever you got going on, please let everybody know. Yeah. Well, first off, shout out to you guys. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I, I, uh, I watched your rise from a, a certain incident a, a month or two ago. That was hilarious. <laughs> oh, you saw that, huh? <laughs> oh, you did see that? <laughs> I've seen, I seen a few things. Um, <laughs> a plus. But a- anyway, um, <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's it's dope to see other people in the space, like taking initiative and doing different things and, and doing interviews and doing shows like you, like everybody, no matter how big, how small, low budget, high budget, whatever it is, everybody is needed in the space. Just like we need um, rappers who are Christian and Christians who are rappers, like they're both right. needed in the space because they all serve a different purpose. Right. right. Um, so, again, shout out to you guys. Keep Thank going. You, it. This this has been super dope. Uh, for me, you can follow me everywhere at Justin Sarachik, just my name. So I'm assuming you could spell Justin and then continue on with S A R A C H I K. Not a Puerto Rican name because my dad is Polish. My mom oh, is Puerto wow. Rican. What I say? You quick story. <laughs> <laughs> See, but did you curse in Polish or something right now? No, Ooh. no, it's talking to Ed. Oh. Nah, I was just saying. <laughs> you, oh, I was like, wait, that's my name. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. He said Brussels or something like that. Nah, okay. I was just saying, no, nah, because we had a conversation. Because I, I was like, Justin is, is Puerto Rican, but I saw his last name and I was like, that, that last name is not Puerto Rican. And someone was like, how you know? I said, that ain't a Puerto Rican last that, name. Nah. It's I told like, him, I said, what, 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 what's Pumarejo? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. how I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad, my dad is like Polish. He was actually Jewish. He grew up Jewish and uh, became a Christian actually when, not when he married my mother, but, you know, again, I had that uncle who had the church and got my whole family saved. And like mm-hmm. my father was a byproduct of that. Wow. That's dope. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. My mom's Puerto Rican. My, my grandfather was a super white Puerto Rican, had super white looking children. So that's why I'm a white, very white looking half Puerto Rican. <laughs> and my wife's, ha- my wife's Puerto Rican and Italian. So our kids are just wow. still half Puerto Rican, yeah, half white, essentially. But, but yeah, um, dope. It's dope. people don't believe me. And be like, yo, let, let me introduce you to my grandmother. You will believe me mad quick. Um, <laughs> I gotta like wear this hat. Why are you wearing a Puerto Rico hat, but guys? I've been telling you, right? <laughs> so you don't speak Spanish. I know. I'm sorry. Not we don't all speak Spanish. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Switch don't speak Spanish. Facts. <laughs> my mom speaks Spanish, but my dad didn't. So who was she yeah. going to talk to? In my right. House? Who was she going to talk to? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right, right. Even my kids, my kids don't speak Spanish just because. And, and Spanish was my first language. You know what I mean? But wow. um, it's not my primary language. So, like, yeah. who am I going to talk to? You know? Like, me and yeah. my wife and I were both born here. Like, we don't, you know, we speak English. 
Mm-hmm. So the kids, unfortunately, the kids didn't learn Spanish. You know, I mean, they could order food, right? They could order mofongo. You yeah, know we know the food. We, all, we, we know the food. We know <laughs> the bad the words. Right. We know what you we need to know. know. That's all you need to know. We know what our what our parents are saying when they switch to Spanish, so we can right. understand what they're saying. But we figured it out by now, right? Because they right. right. always say those same things every single time I walk in the room. Uh, so you know, we're able to figure that out. Um, yeah, man, it's. I mean, Latinos are amazing because we're all different colors, right? We're the whole color spectrum. You look at anyone's family tree and they're anywhere from like black to milk. Um, So it's like, and that's my family. Um, So like sometimes I stick out like a sore thumb uh, because it's like, yo, who's the the six foot two white kid standing in the back with all these Puerto Ricans? (laughs) That's my cousin. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, man, it's dope. Thank, Thank you guys again so much. This has been a lot of fun. No, hey, thank you for coming, coming on, on yeah. man. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank, yeah. Um, With that being said, we want to remind everybody, uh, Black Friday is coming up. You go to shop that that's not Christian.com, use promo code thankful T H N K F L for 30% off. And if you listen to this by Cyber Monday, use Cybermon C Y B E R M O N for 20% off. Anything site wide. Uh, thank you again. We are the fastest growing Christian podcast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. 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 Uh,